what is the basis of parliamentary democracy the basis of parliamentary democracy is that the executive is accountable to the legislature who is head of the executive the executive is prime minister maybe prime minister alone why is it that prime minister is silent on us are we orphans are we not are we not part of this country are we not rightful citizens of this country why is it that prime minister has completely abandoned in deeds and words the ongoing monsoon session of parliament has not been an ordinary one there have been disruptions adjournments but most of all the opposition parties filed on 26th of july a no confidence motion against the government the trigger for these developments is also far from ordinary it's the crisis in manipur today we're going to catch up on news click with dr john pritas who is a member of parliament from the cpim from kerala and he has also been on a recent visit to manipur let's ask him a few questions mr pritas thank you very much for joining news click for this discussion you know first things first why insist why is the opposition insisting that only the prime minister should speak on the manipur issue why is the home minister statement and discussion not good enough manipur is one of the 28 states moreover it's a bordering state further it has got national consequences and implications don't you think it's appropriate for the prime minister to assure the parliament the nation the people of manipur because his silence for almost 79 days had done irreparable damage for the manipur cause that's why we are saying and moreover what is the basis of parliamentary democracy the basis of parliamentary democracy is that the executive is accountable to the legislature Absolutely. who is head of the executive the executive is prime minister maybe prime minister alone that's right yeah so how much of this perception is created also by the fact that some of some people who are in parliament and outside including yourself have actually been to manipur and seen the situation there can you can you tell us what you saw there and how did that make you feel that the prime minister should step in see uh, i had visited manipur and uh, four days uh, we toured many places the valley and the hill tops uh we covered something like uh, 10 refugee camps met with cross section of the civil society there called upon the governor uh had interactions with a uh, lot of professional groups and political groups there our impression is that there is a huge wall of hatred that has come up between two communities and the state is vertically split mm-hmm. and all these refugee camps have same story to tell the lives and livelihoods devastated and you can see small kids youngsters in camps and it should be more than i would say 55000 60000 people officially and unofficially thousands of people must have escaped to the neighboring states and don't you think that the situation warrant the head of the government to come to the parliament we are not asking to go to any ghetto or to anywhere it's a parliament it's where he prostrated on the steps of parliament saying that he respects it and if he respects the parliament if he respects the constitution it is his bounden duty to come and address the parliament it is his parliament as much as ours it's not a foreign parliament it's not a parliament of the pakistan it's indian parliament don't we have the right to do say ask for that especially because the prime minister has made a statement outside parliament now one of one of the things that has happened is a sort of escalation you've got a no confidence motion now and about 12 days left for house to hold business and 10 days for the government to decide what to do with your motion so is it going to be a washout in a sense this session and, and nobody gains anything see we understand that it's dending many of our purposes also we want to productively contribute to the bills that have been passed which are coming up on the floor of the house which has got far reaching consequences for the population at the same time we have we have exhausted all other options now no confidence motion is the only way in which we can insist for a full fledged discussion 
it's not that we are doing out of some uh, pleasure or uh, having some delight or something it's out of pain we are going for unless we can insist for a full fledged discussion and if the government is staying away and that is the only rule on which we can bring the prime minister to the house we need to use that otherwise we would be failing in our duty that's the whole purpose of bringing this no confidence motion and i don't think we are under a foolish impression that uh, we can break down the government nobody thinks so it's to make the executive accountable let him answer to the parliament and when he is answering to the parliament he is answering the whole nation addressing the whole nation i will tell you one thing can you imagine a situation whereby the prime minister of india opening his mouth for 45 seconds on manipur in the compound of parliament what prevents him to just enter the parliament and say what is it yes is it ego is it pride does he feel that there will be too many questions i feel that he has arrogated himself maybe the ideology of bjp doesn't gel with the ideology of parliamentary democracy otherwise the second time he talked about uh, the opposition was uh, uh, or other where he came near to the parliament i would say near to the parliament was when he addressed the bjp parliamentary <laughs> party okay. inside the library auditorium okay. that is a stone throw away from the main building okay so he has used two opportunities to come near the parliament hmm. at least we are glad that he is coming near to the parliament at least all you want him to do is sort of take a few steps inside the house and make a statement now interestingly you know whenever the prime minister speaks it also has a tendency to become divisive people get divisive some people get hurt and in a no confidence motion uh, that's what the system says he gets the last word how are you preparing for this uh, i i beg to differ with you okay see having divergent opinions is not divisive okay i feel that uh, it's a view of the bjp uh, if you go to northeast uh, i have been i mean traveling to northeast many destinations part of parliamentary committee and so on right so the motto of bjp to have uniformity mm. they are against this uh, divergent cultures and divergent views right let different multiple views come on the floor of the parliament that is the beauty of democracy what why sh why should you have a single voice if you have a single voice means the country has passed on to a dictatorship it's a democracy let everyone speak it's a parliamentary democracy wherein there are a lot of political parties who have their own view on that any issue absolutely so, yeah i feel that divergence of opinion should be the uh, pedestal for a healthy democracy is your party speaking with other opposition parties what is your strategy for the coming days we are for india we are with india which india <laughs> are we talking about now india naturally <laughs> the the country or your as many parties which are part of the india represents india it's a Absolutely. different shades of it's a rainbow india more than rainbow there are multiple colors we need to retain the country like that all right what's your strategy our strategy is that opposition should move together because this is going to be the election year our single motto should be to defeat defeat this dictatorial government we need to dethrone this government that is essentially to protect democracy there are some people who think that the indian constitution will protect democracy no that's a wrong notion only democracy can protect constitution unless you have a democracy can you protect any constitution it's like a document but <laughs> people say that india will never ever tread away from democracy because we have a very comprehensive constitution egalitarian constitution absolutely wrong many countries which slipped into uh, totalitarian or dictatorial system had also many good books like that holy books were there actually they were believers devout believers did that prevent them from going to a dictatorial government no so we feel that in order to protect the constitution the primary task is to protect the democracy of this nation so 2024 is crucial for this country not because we want to win or somebody needs to be defeated but indian democracy needs to survive i'm going to return to another question again Please. in the same context that mr modi has a way with words 
And those words can really strike very deep. Why are you, in a sense, giving him an opportunity to speak? Won't his silence speak louder among the people? Let him not speak if he doesn't want. How does it matter? Hollow words have louder resonance. That's what I need to say about Modi. Second, you and me, being in the thick of the mainstream media, yes. we feel that only Modi's voice prevail. But even a distant voice in the wilderness will reach the remote area. And that is the resonance which we are waiting for. It happened in Karnataka. What was the fury and sound which emanated from the BJP campaign? What was the type of roadshow? What was the humongous uh, election missionary they had? What was the spent? What was the roadshows? The noise level was too high, as you rightly said, louder, shilling. Did it help BJP? Absolutely not. So the facade that is being created by the mainstream, uh, mainstream media may not be true because they have completely caved into his, uh, uh, I would say, maybe that's why people say it's a Godi media, uh, to his lap. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, they are working as laptops of Modi. So I would say that, please don't be under the impression that the noises, voices which come from parliament only are skewed in favor of BJP. Even a small, I am a very, very small political uh, being in the sense I am a uh, normal, humble parliamentary. But I feel that there are a lot of people, thousands of people who are influenced by my voice. Tell me, in Manipur, were people demanding ordinary people, politicians, were they demanding the Prime Minister's statement too? I would say that cutting across the regions, irrespective whether it is a valley or a hilltop, irrespective whether it is Meiti, Naga or uh, Kuki or any other ethnic community, everyone was asking us, everyone, why is it that Prime Minister is silent on us? Are we orphans? Are we, not, are we not part of this country? Are we not rightful citizens of this country? Why is it that Prime Minister has completely abandoned in deeds and words? That was the refrain. I would say the common refrain. Irrespective of political affiliation, irrespective of ethnic diversity, irrespective of the geographical entity of Manipur. Which makes it even more mysterious why he is silent on it. I, I really am. I feel that his silence plus... The continuance of Biren Singh, who is grossly culpable for all what has happened there, um, make us to think that there is a orchestrated, choreographed plan for this ethnic cleansing. How dire is the situation in Manipur? That's my final question. I, say, I, I, I will just give a small example. There, are, there were thousands of cookie government employees in the valley, thousands. Naturally, it's a government establishment and 90% of the Manipur is in valley, though it is only 10% of the geographical uh, spacing that is there. So naturally, being the center of uh, power and authority, Imphal used to host thousands of people. And there were thousands of people from Koki community who were government servants in center establishment and state establishment. You won't find a single cookie employee in Infile Valley. It demonstrates the state of affairs of a state wherein which a community is completely away from the capital city. And even the governor was saying that she has never ever confronted such a scene like this, wherein people are completely divided, completely divided. See, few years of BJP government has done this polarization. And as you rightly asked, why is the silence? I feel that the silence and continuance of Biren Singh government underscores the fact that there is a scheme of things for polarizing Manipur population. Absolutely clear. And speaking out in parliament would only damage that project of the BJP, is what the opposition I is. feel that uh, the country should know, because I will tell you one thing, Manipur is a big lesson for the country. See, speaking on Manipur is not for Manipur alone. 
it's for the people of this country please take it from me kerala is something like 3000 kilometers away from manipur right. see manipur had a huge lesson for kerala direct lesson because in kerala uh, bjp and rss were conducting outreach outreach towards the minority communities especially christian community they were climbing the stairs of the bishop houses in kerala right. including prakash javdekar who is supposed to be in charge of kerala now the christian community has realized the true colors of bjp and rss because this was a scheme same scheme of, scheme of things they worked out in manipur see the ethnic composition of uh, manipur is more or less the religious composition of kerala more or less more or less yes so it is a direct lesson for kerala it's a direct lesson for the entire country what will happen if you indulge in politics of polarization if you indulge in political polarization the huge damage that does for the lives and livelihood of the people would be completely instrumental for destroying this great nation so the whole people should know what is happening in manipur one of the other things about uh, manipur that you've actually written about in the indian express was the internet shutdown and how that has affected people now it's been lifted partially how was that internet partially. shutdown partially yes partially that means uh, it could be even 1% of the uh, curve which has been lifted i'll tell you i have been very passionate about internet because i am part of the it standing committee it standing committee unanimously adopted a report saying that see uh, just like a drop of a hat you should not bring in internet shutdown because on the other count government says that it's a digital india on the other side you say that see uh, internet shutdown can be resorted to now what is happening there is an it standing committee there are supreme court judgments see this is a time when internet is absolutely part of your life nothing was and livelihoods it. yeah you pushing a community pushing a state pre pre information era it's like taking people to a cave it has got cascading effects that's why we deliberated on this internet shutdowns elsewhere and came to the conclusion that there should be a due process which should be followed before bringing internet shutdown there should be a discussion it should not be left left to a officer like a tahsildar to resort to internet it's like somebody telling you tomorrow you will not have oxygen tomorrow you will not have food tomorrow you will not have water it's as good or as worse like that so can you imagine that you see a state is plunged into darkness pushed to push relegated to a pre information era for almost 3 months that's why i raised this issue and i wrote couple of articles i raised this issue in the parliament standing committee and i told this gum i i in fact my request is this the government should adhere to the unanimous recommendations of the parliament standing committee because Uh, with my naked eyes i witnessed the agony and trauma of the people because even a small i would say a a, a craftsman is dealt with a huge blow he may be i mean selling couple of baskets on e-commerce see you are you are simply depriving the people it's a, it's it's a second i would say assault on the people it's i would say it's as uh, harming like the fire that has been lit in manipur it's a second violence how come fake news was able to circulate even though the internet was can i ask you one question you didn't we have rights before was there internet now at that time see sunlight is the best disinfectant 90% of your illness would be resolved if you stand in the sunlight if you want to bring transparency you need to have a free flowing communication here you had a occasion to view the ghastly scene of two women yes. being paraded the conscience of the prime minister was pricked supreme court i mean got a chance to respond imagine 
if there was internet this 2 minutes or 3 minutes video would have come out two months back it would have been the huge detrimental effect on these rights this would have made some semblance of administration in uh, manipur this would have helped thousands and thousands of people to prevent this violent groups from usurping into their lives and livelihoods so my firm views that okay at worst scenario you may have to resort to but it should be following a due process understanding the pros and cons it should be limited to that area limited to that section devastating people's life pushing them relegating to a pre information era to a dark age is not a solution for a country like this and that's all we have for you right now please keep watching news click for more updates from this session of parliament and also the views of our parliamentarians on manipur and how the government is mishandling it thanks very much for watching again